Three Minute Flex. Entertaining, educating, and enlightening. Hello everyone, and welcome back. Today, we're diving into the fascinating history of the American presidential nomination process. Ever wondered how we went from smoke-filled rooms to the primary elections we have today? Or if there's ever been a case of a candidate rejecting a nomination at a major party convention? Stick around as we explore these intriguing questions and more. Let's start at the beginning. The American presidential nomination process has evolved significantly over the years. Today's primary elections, with their complex system of primaries and caucuses, might seem like the natural way of doing things. But this system is actually the result of a long and often turbulent history. In the early years of the United States, presidential candidates were not selected by primaries or caucuses. Instead, nominations were made through a process known as the smoke-filled room. This informal system dominated the 19th and early 20th centuries. Before primaries were introduced, political parties held conventions where delegates, often selected by party leaders and insiders, gathered to choose their candidate. These conventions were sometimes held in smoky rooms, far removed from the public eye, where deals and bargains were made. One notable example of this process was the 1920 Republican National Convention. Warren G. Harding, who was not initially considered a top contender, emerged as the nominee largely due to backroom deals and the strategic maneuvering of party leaders. This process led to criticisms of a lack of transparency and fairness. The early 20th century brought a wave of reform, largely influenced by the progressive era. Reformers sought to make the nomination process more democratic and less susceptible to corruption. One key reform was the introduction of primary elections. The first states to adopt primary elections were Oregon and Wisconsin, leading the charge with systems that allowed voters to have a say in selecting delegates who would attend the party conventions. These early primaries were still relatively limited in scope, but they set the stage for broader reforms. By the 1960s, the primary system had evolved considerably. The Democratic Party, in particular, faced criticism for the lack of transparency in its nomination process, especially after the controversial 1968 Democratic National Convention in Chicago. This event was a dramatic and pivotal event in American politics. Set against a backdrop of nationwide unrest over the Vietnam War and civil rights, the convention was marked by intense protests and violent clashes between demonstrators and police. Inside, the nomination of Hubert Humphrey, who had not competed in the primaries, highlighted deep divisions within the Democratic Party. The chaotic scenes and heavy-handed police response were broadcast nationwide, underscoring the profound disconnect between the political establishment and the public. The fallout led to significant reforms in the nomination process aimed at making it more democratic and transparent. In response to the 1968 protests, the Democratic Party established the mcgovern fraser Commission to overhaul the nomination process. The goal was to make it more transparent, inclusive, and representative of the general electorate. The reforms introduced by the mcgovern fraser Commission included the expansion of primaries and caucuses across more states and a new emphasis on proportional representation. This meant that delegates would be allocated in a manner more reflective of the vote share each candidate received rather than winner-take-all systems. The Republican Party also adopted similar reforms, and by the 1970s, the modern primary system was taking shape. Today, each party's nomination process involves a series of state primaries and caucuses leading up to the national conventions, where delegates officially cast their votes for the party's presidential nominee. Now, let's address a curious aspect of our history candidates who have rejected nominations. While rare, there have been instances where candidates turned down their party's nomination. One of the most notable examples is the case of William Henry Harrison in 1836. Harrison was initially offered the Whig Party's presidential nomination but declined it. The party eventually nominated him again in 1840, this time successfully, leading to his election as the ninth president of the United States. More recently, in 1968, Lyndon B. Johnson, the incumbent president, initially sought renomination but withdrew from the race amid mounting criticism and challenges within his party. Though not a direct rejection at the convention, his withdrawal had a significant impact on the nomination process. In addition to the primary and caucus systems, the role of superdelegates has also been a point of interest. Superdelegates, or unpledged delegates, are party leaders and elected officials who have the freedom to vote for any candidate at the convention. This system was introduced by the Democratic Party in 1984 to give party leaders more influence in the nomination process. 
The superdelegate system has faced criticism for potentially undermining the democratic process. However, recent reforms have sought to limit their influence and ensure that the majority of delegates are pledged based on primary and caucus results. The American presidential nomination process has come a long way from the smoke-filled rooms of the 19th century to the modern era of primaries, caucuses, and conventions. This evolution reflects broader changes in American politics, from increased demands for transparency and democracy to ongoing debates about the balance of power within the parties. Understanding this history helps us appreciate the complexities of our current system and the efforts made to ensure that the nomination process is fair and representative. As we look forward to future elections, who knows what further changes might be on the horizon. Thanks for joining us on this journey through the history of the American presidential nomination process. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more deep dives into history and politics. If you have any questions or comments, drop them below. We'd love to hear from you. Three Minute Flex. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. We create new videos weekly.